tiny Scottish archipelago at the edge of the world, but at the forefront of innovation. Strong winds and powerful tides have made Orkney a paradise for renewables, the ideal testing ground for the next generation of low-carbon technology. We know we've got a lot of energy in the water all around us. So here in Orkney in Scotland, and we're at the point where the North Sea and the North Atlantic meet. The tides run really strongly through here, and we get up to half a billion tonnes of seawater go through here for six hours, it turns around and it goes back again and does the same thing. Behind me is the world's largest tidal turbine, a two megawatt tidal turbine. It's about 74 metres long, it looks like an aircraft that's landed on the sea, um, and hanging underneath it are a pair of rotors, which are effectively like underwater wind turbines. And it generates energy from the tides as the water sweeps past it and turns the rotor blades underwater. One of the advantages of tidal energy is it's entirely predictable. We know when the tides are going to be running and when there's going to be energy. This turbine will, we'll say, will run about 2,000 houses, and we expect this turbine is going to do something like 7% of Orkney's electricity needs in this year. We're testing this tidal turbine, we're testing wave energy machines, and Orkney's really set itself up to be something of a test bed of a whole lot of different technologies. Somewhere there's an old steam engine with Made in Glasgow written on the side of it. We'd love the same thing to be happening with tidal energy in 50 years from now. I'd love this to be Scotland's gift to the world. This is just the start of something that's enormous. The future of Britain's clean energy revolution may very well be here in Orkney. In 2020, the archipelago produced more electricity from green sources than it can use. But harnessing the power of the ocean could further propel the island into the ranks of renewable superpowers. The United Kingdom predicting that marine energy could provide 20% of the country's electricity needs. That target, though, remains a long way off. Costs are high, far exceeding those of traditional renewables, such as wind and solar. In the meantime, Orkney can rely on its most precious asset, the wind, so much so that even the locals have been harvesting their own. So the wind resource in Orkney is really good. That's in 25, 30 mile an hour winds, it's ideal. I've, I've travelled the world in, in Orkney, it's by far the windiest place that I've been to. My wind turbine, I've got one going to the house and two go to the farm. The faster the wind turbines are turning, the less money I'm paying for electricity. The three turbines probably generate somewhere between 25 and 30,000 pounds a year. I install turbines for small farms, big farms, houses, just for anybody that's got space for a small wind turbine. There's 700 turbines in Orkney, and I would be thinking there may be between 15 and 20 percent of the houses in Orkney will have some type of renewable source, whether it's wind or, or solar to a lesser extent. Whether it's domestic or farmers, it's a good investment. I think they're making money for the wind. They're also saving money by the electricity that's used in the house. Also, the, the electricity goes to the grids. Everybody's getting an advantage. I think wind turbines should be part of the landscape. I think everybody should have a wind turbine. We should all do our little bit for the, the green energy in the world. And I think Orkney's doing their bit very well. At times, we have too much renewable energy generation, so um, rather than wasting the energy, we decided to look at innovative ways that we could try and use that energy. We're standing here at the hydrogen refueling station, um, and what we're doing here in Orkney is very specifically producing green hydrogen. So that's using renewable energy, like wind or tidal energy. 
To make it very simple, you have water and you use electricity to split that water into hydrogen and oxygen. And you can use that hydrogen as a fuel. It's a very uh, clean, uh, doesn't produce any carbon dioxide. Orkney is an island and we're linked to the Scottish mainland by ferries and that uses, at the moment, a lot of heavy fuel oil. Um, so that's a really key sector that we want to try and decarbonise in future. Ferries are using hydrogen at a relatively small level, but the plan in the future is to transfer our, our ferries um, to run entirely on, on green hydrogen. Um, the challenge is, is scaling up and, and getting the costs to come down, but I'm really proud of what we've achieved in such a small place. A green hydrogen economy is definitely not a pipe dream. You can see here in Orkney, it's happening, but we have a very clear goal of where we want to get to.